Okay, we've been doing some algebraic long division, and to tie in with that, we're going to look at the factor and remainder theorems with algebra. So, just a quick recap with numbers. If I were to ask you something like 17 divided by 3, you'd all know that you would do 3 goes into 17 five times, and you've got a remainder of 2, and we would write that as 2 thirds. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and look at how we can find the remainder when we are dividing algebra, dividing a pol polynomial. So when we divide a polynomial, fx by x minus a, what we would get would be B. fx divided by x minus a equals, I'm going to write this as q plus r over x minus a. It's kind of similar to how we did it with the numbers above. This q stands for the quotient. And this r, if you remember, is what the remainder was. The one above the remainder was 2. 3 went in 17 5 times, remainder 2. And the x minus a is equivalent to the 3. And we're going to use this to prove the remainder theorem. So if I look at this expression, I multiply both sides, or I multiply everything by x minus a. So if I multiply everything by x minus a, the left hand side is just going to be fx. I'm going to have x minus a times q plus, and that one's just going to be r. And hopefully you will agree that if I were to then put, I'll just make that negative a bit clearer, that was a minus sign. If I were to work out f of a, so what that's meaning is that everywhere where there's an x, I'm now going to replace it with the letter a. So on this side, if I put a in for the x, this bracket would become a times a, or a minus a, sorry, which is 0. And 0 times 2q, 0 times anything is 0. So that side simply becomes r. So that gives us the remainder. So what we're saying is if we're dividing a polynomial by x minus a, if I put a into the polynomial in place of x, the answer I get is simply the remainder. And what could I say if that is 0? So if that's 0, then we could say the remainder is 0. And thus, this x minus a must be a factor of fx. It must go into it completely. So if we'd done, instead of 17 divided by 3 on the top, I'd done 15 divided by 3 and got 5, then my remainder would be 0. That 5 is a factor of 15, or the 3 is a factor of 15. So just to have these down... in one step then. So the remainder theorem says that for a polynomial fx, the remainder when fx is divided by x minus a is f a. What we get when we put that a value back into our function. And the factor theorem is basically the same thing. So for the factor theorem, if f of a equals 0, then the remainder 
is zero. So x minus a is a factor of fx. Or you could write that the other way around. You could write if x minus a is a factor of fx, then f of a equals zero. So if it's zero, you've got zero remainder, the bracket must have been a factor of your function. Okay, let's look at a couple of examples of this. So, if we say, what is the remainder when? Okay, so for my first example, let's go with x squared minus 3x plus 2 is divided by x minus 2. So, if we're dividing by x minus 2, then if we remember at the top, if it was x minus a, we put a in, f of a, so it's x minus 2, so I'm going to work out f of 2. f of 2 would simply be 2 squared minus 3 times 2 plus 2, 4 minus 6 is minus 2 plus 2, ooh, that's 0. So the remainder here is 0, so we could say, therefore, x minus 2 is a factor. We don't have to. We were only asked to find the remainder. The remainder is zero. Example two then. X cubed plus 2x is divided by x plus 3. So... This time, you'll see that the sign's different. So when it was x minus 2, we put a positive 2 in. If it's x plus 3, we're going to work out f of minus 3. I'm going to do minus 3 cubed plus 2 times minus 3, and that gives me minus 33. So the remainder, when I divide x cubed plus 2x by x plus 3, the remainder is minus 33. Right, I'm going to put some questions up now. What I suggest you do is you just um, put the questions up on your screen, pause it, have a go at them. There's going to be four. And then you can unpause and just listen to the answers to those to make sure you've got those correct before you move on to the slightly harder ones. So here are the questions for you to have a go at. You can pause the video and have a go at these four questions. Okay, if you're a little bit stuck on questions three and four, I'm going to give you a hint before I go through all the answers. And my hint for three is, if you're not sure what you're putting into the bracket, f of what, think here about what value of x makes this 2x minus 1 equals 0. That's the value you're going to put into your bracket. Okay, some answers then if you've had a go at these. So for number one, you should have worked out f of two and that gave you five. For number two, you should have worked out f of minus one and that gave you zero, so that one's a factor. For three, we should have worked out f of a half. My hint was above, we need to work out what value makes that zero. So two x minus one, the value that makes it zero is a half. And that gave us 5 over 4. And for the last one, question 4, similar to the one above, what value of x would make that 0? That's going to be minus 4 over 3. If I put minus 4 over 3 into x squared minus x, I get 28 over 9 as my remainder. Okay, I'm going to put a sheet of questions up as well for you to have a go at, just a PDF with some questions on it. Have a go at those. I'll post the answers to those later as well.